On behalf of the Commonwealth of Virginia, welcome to the 2014 Virginia Fallen Firefighters Memorial Service. We would also like to welcome our audience watching the service live via the internet. Please stand for the presentation of colors.
Please remain standing as we recite our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The national anthem will now be sung by our master firefighter, Israel Medina, of the Virginia Beach Fire Department. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> 
Reverend Teresa K. McRoberts will now give the invocation. Friends, we gather here to celebrate the life, service, and sacrifice of Joshua Smith, Frederick Broyles, Joe Perkins, and Claire Ducker. And in this celebration of all the ways these dedicated firefighters have used their strengths and abilities, we give glory to the God who made them. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, your love never ends. When all else fails, you are still God. And for this we give thanks. As we gather to celebrate and remember, you know that we also grieve. May our time together be one where we acknowledge this human grief, while remembering that you give light to those who doubt, strength to those who are weary, and comfort to those who hurt. Pour out your spirit and your grace among these gathered here that we may hear anew the message of hope and renewal as we remember especially the fallen ones whom you created in love and whom you gifted with a spirit of service and sacrifice. Amen. You may now be seated. Susan Greenbaum will now perform Virginia, the home of my heart. Eulogies will now be offered for each of the four fallen firefighters. Chief Steve Dishman of Danville Fire Department will offer the eulogy for Joe Perkins. I had the privilege to work with uh, Joe 
in a number of situations as a firefighter, as a uh, company officer, and as a chief officer. And I always remember him as being very alert and uh, observant of what was going on and that person with that situational awareness. Uh, he was with me with the first fire I answered as a company officer and uh, they took care of me very well. Uh, he was a leader in his own way. Never had to look for him. He was always ready when the job came about. And uh, he spent most of his career at our station three, finished up at station four. Uh, one thing about him, he was very passionate about a number of things in his life, but especially his family. As uh, I shared this at his funeral uh, with them as well. Also his military service, he was a Vietnam veteran. Uh, his beloved Redskins football team and the fire department. He was also very active in the American Legion uh, post-29. He served in their honor guard. Uh, is there uh, in a number of positions in their post there as well, but he was also a member, a proud member of the Masons. He was a unique individual and uh, it was never difficult to know where he stood on any situation or subject. He was, uh, but he could be nice about it. He could be very nice about that. So uh, you also didn't have to ask him for his opinion. He would share it. But in a, in a relatively low key but passionate way at times, uh, he also had a love of children. He always loved, loved talking about his son, his grandkid. And he also liked to talk with us about their children. So he was very interested in families and, and kids growing up being uh, good children and respectful and the like. Uh, he had expectations for young people, not only his own, but he, he liked to look at others as well and expect uh, expected them to have respect for their elders. And uh, he showed that respect. He didn't like to see anyone taken advantage of, and he would stand on that. But, you know, he was, again, he was a man of respect. He respected others. He earned respect and just simply expected that human dignity respect for everybody that he came in touch with going both ways uh, with that. But he also earned it with that. He didn't brag. He had a, he had a certain humility about him. And uh, even though we're talking about his passions, he was somewhat quiet in a lot of ways when he was uh, in things. But he spoke softly, but he had a lot of wisdom about him too and uh, many things there. He liked to keep things as simple as possible. Life in general uh, and all that. That was challenging even for a lot of us as things changed so rapidly uh, with that. But he would do the best he could to adapt and deal with things uh, there. I wanted to thank him for his service. He was a friend to everyone he worked with, but I want to say that I was proud to call him a friend of mine. Thank you. Next, we will have Battalion Chief Jerry Reed will offer the eulogy for Frederick Broyles. Today, we gather to honor a man, a husband, a father of six, and a grandfather of eight who pursued all his interests with a relentless passion. Vicki, family, Friends, brothers, and sisters, I'm truly honored to stand before you and speak of a man who truly embodied the heart and soul of a firefighter. His bravery and service to the Newport News Fire Department was only surpassed by his courage in combating the illness that would eventually take him to his final resting place. Master Firefighter Fred Broyles was a towering and imposing figure, but a teddy bear at heart. Fred was passionate about everything that he did, and it flowed freely. If someone was in need of help, he couldn't, he wouldn't turn them down. Early in Fred's adult life, he became a Virginia State Trooper, but later realized he was a firefighter at heart. His wife, Vicki, stated to me that it was his passion and in his blood, there was nothing he would rather do. Plus, he didn't like donuts. Besides his family and faith, 
The fire department was one of the most important com components of Fred's good life. Fred also loved racing. Not only was he a crazed NASCAR fan, but he loved it so much he bought his own car, a race car. Fred was always in the full speed mode, especially when it came to serving others. One of the things that firefighters often do is give back to the community. A lot of Fred's time away from work was spent at Jenkins Elementary School, where he tutored and read to students. It was there he encountered a young boy. He was tutoring and was in danger of failing. Now Malik Price has grown into a fine young man and is graduating from Denby High School this evening. It is said that a life that touches others goes on forever. When September 11th took place, Fred and family were deeply moved to the loss of 343 of our FDNY brothers. You see, it never mattered to Fred that they were in a different state, department. They were his brothers. He, along with his wife, Vicki, organized a campaign called Nichols for New York. Together, they orchestrated collecting loose change from all the school children throughout Newport News. And together, they collected over $10,000 for the children of fallen firefighters. The cancer diagnosis came in 2002, and it took Fred down a completely different path. Due to the progression of the cancer, Fred was forced to leave the active fire service. Yet he never left. He constantly called to check on his brothers and sisters in the Newport Department and attempted to attend every retiree breakfast meeting. He never turned away from the part of his life. One of Fred's final wishes, as you'll see in your bulletin, was fulfilled because in Newport News we have a tradition that for those who retire on their last day, the department member is given and taken around station to station for their one last ride. That's to visit with their fellow department members and to say goodbye. But you see, Fred was diagnosed with this terrible disease and it had not been able to get in his final ride. This changed on Thursday, June 20th, 2013. Fred received his wish to get his properly honor, due honor. And even though weak in body, he was strong in spirit. He and the kids came into the tent, into the den at his house. Fred was standing up, ready to go to station seven, his last assigned fire station. As their van turned the corners, they were met by hundreds of firefighters, police officers, retirees, students, and other caring citizens throughout Newport News and neighboring communities. It was beyond their wildest dreams of the brotherhood that they witnessed that wonderful day. When Fire Chief Liebold told him he would be riding officer on Engine 7 that day, Fred was one happy man. As Engine 7 left that morning, Fred's eyes lit up and he enjoyed every second of the trip. He rode by every station and was saluted by every member on duty that day. When he got to Station 10, his longest duty assignment, and his final stop. Fred did not want to get out of that engine that day. He actually sat there for about half an hour just enjoying it and the friendship that the guys offered. Finally, when he got really tired, Fred got out of the engine and he returned home. As long as I live, I'll never ever forget that day. I visualized a man who embraced everyone, despite his weak body, a man who never complained about his sickness, but professed how blessed he actually was, a faith unshaken and without fail. Little did we know that Fred would pass four days later on Monday, June 24th. Kerry Hamilton wrote, our legacy is really the lives we touch, the inspiration we give, altering someone's plan, if even for a moment, and getting them to think, cry, and laugh. More than anything, we are remembered for our smiles, the ones we share with our closest and dearest, and the ones we bestow on a total stranger. This stranger may need it right now, and God put you there to deliver. Vicki and family, you provided such an incredible support system for him, and he loved you all very much. Master Firefighter Fred Boyles was an incredible family man who never lost his love of the fire service. He was proud to serve, and I am equally proud to call him my brother. Thank you. Next, we will have Deputy Chief Michael Riley who will offer the eulogy for Claire Ducker, Jr. Secretary Moran, Deputy Secretary Adam Teal, of course Melvin, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here to share Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department's uh, eulogy to the family of C.O. Ducker. 
When I first met C.O., I, I thought he was actually Irish. They called him Claire O'Ducker. I, I didn't find out till many years later that he's not really an Irishman from, and O is not the uh, an official name of O'Ducker. But uh, certainly he was a good friend of mine. I worked with him for many, many years. <clears throat> and before I get into his eulogy, I want to kind of express to the family, Patty and children, of course, we want to thank you from the 1,500 firefighters of Fairfax County Fire and Rescue for loaning your husband to our family for the many, many years. We all know that these firefighters, when they put on the uniform, they are the heroes. They don't have to do anything more than put that uniform on because we all know that any day they can put their lives down in the protection of others. The CO, in fact, was a mentor for many, many years for many firefighters. And those that are out here in the audience know that CO is ingrained in our organization. For the many years that he served protecting the over one million citizens of Fairfax County and helping train over 1,500 of our firefighters to be the best that they could ever be. So thank you for loaning your husband to us and sharing your family with our family. CO Ducker started his career in the Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department in his early 20s. He certainly tried uh, many different opportunities to do different things in our organization, but his love, his calling, was to drive a fire truck. Certainly in order for firefighters to put out that fire, they have to know their streets, they have to know their equipment, and they have to know how to get there and put that fire out. And Claire Ducker excelled in that personal job. Many officers in this organization owe their lives and their training to CO Ducker, who got them there safely, allowed his firefighters to pull that line, go into that building, and provide the water to save those lives. And he did that many, many, many times. In fact, that wasn't the only thing that he did. Obviously, besides mentoring the many men and women within our organization to teach them the many years of experience that he had and to pass on that legacy, I recall one particular event which was kind of an unusual event. Uh, a gentleman driving uh, to work one morning uh, felt like he was going to have a medical condition and pulled into a parking lot at a, uh, at a golf course. Uh, just about that time when he got there, this gentleman had a seizure and actually drove into a lake at the golf course. Now, while we're not trained for underwater rescue, Claire Ducker, arriving first with his engine company, quickly donned some apparatus and SCBA and went in and after this young man. We wound up getting him out of that vehicle, which was about 20 feet underwater, and performed admirably, but unfortunately he did not survive. But Claire would not let a vehicle in water 20 feet down stop him from doing what he did best, and that was to try and help people. That call, I believe he received many awards for, and I think he received the Valor Award for that event. Furthermore, besides his many numerous awards, his uh, proudest time, of course, was spent with his family. I remember the day, day that he met Patty and married her. That was the, the best thing that he ever did. Obviously, his beautiful children will never forget the great legacy that he has passed on to the rest of us. So from the members of the Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department, and more importantly, from Fire Chief Richie Bowers, we thank you for your service. We thank you for your family's contribution to our organization and realize that you are always part of our family. God bless you and love you. Next, we will have Chief Mike Clark, who will offer the eulogy for Joshua Smith. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Josh Smith was born on November 22, 1998. He departed his life December 14, 2013. Josh graduated from Parkview Senior High and later attended South South Virginia Community College. Josh enjoyed playing sports. He became a coach for the Lake Gaston Soccer Association where all the kids there loved him. He was also a referee. He was the manager of Sonic Restaurants in South Hill, Virginia in Creedmoor, North Carolina. Josh joined the fire department 
on September 16, 2013. Tonight, tonight we buried it on Josh. We called him and told him that he was a member. And I was sitting up front holding the meeting. Josh swung the door open to the meeting room. He said, hey, Chief, I'm here. And Josh sat in that chair every night that we had a meeting. He gave 100% to the department since the day he joined. <clears throat> it didn't matter to him if it was at a fire call, a fundraiser, or work detail. Josh was always willing and ready to go. Josh loved the fire department, and we loved him. He will make you laugh even if you were having a bad day. He joked when it was time to joke and worked when it was time to work. He always hungered at the fire department with the guys. No matter what was going on, if Josh wasn't working, he was at the fire department. He loved it. A bunch of them would get together on Sunday and go play football. And if you didn't catch the ball, Josh would make up a song about it and sing it to you while, you, while they were playing. He touched all the members and the ladies' auxiliary in a special way. On December the 14th, 2013, Joshua responded to a call to help someone else that was in need of help. While en route to the fire station, Josh got another call. That call he was needed in heaven. Josh will always be in our hearts. And when Company 5 gets the call, we know that you will be riding with us. Rest in peace, 535. We will always miss you. Thank you for being here today with us as we pay tribute to the brave men and women of Virginia's Fine Emergency Medical Services. To the family members, friends, and comrades of Joe Perkins, Frederick Broyles, Joshua Smith, and Claire Ducker, Jr. Please accept our heartfelt condolences. We are honored by the sacrifice these men made for the citizens of Virginia. I would also like to welcome members of the General Assembly, cabinet members, Virginia's Fire Services board members, and all the members and friends of Virginia's Fire Services who are in attendance. As we gather here today, we mark the 17th anniversary of this service, and we honor not only those four men, but also the more than 240 firefighters and emergency medical services personnel who have lost their lives over the years while serving and protecting the citizens of the Commonwealth. This afternoon, we are honored to host our new Secretary of Public Safety and Homeland Security, Brian J. Moran, as our keynote speaker. Secretary Moran boasts an extensive background in public safety, beginning his career as a judicial law clerk. After clerking for a year, Secretary Moran became a prosecutor in Arlington County. Secretary Moran was first elected to the House of Delegates in 1995 and represented the 73,000 citizens of the city of Alexandria and Fairfax County for 12 years. While, in legislator, legis while a legislator, he served on the Courts of Justice and Transportation Committees, the Virginia State Crime Commission, the Board of Virginia Alcohol Safety Action Program, and the Secure Virginia Panel. panel. As a legislator, he dedicated his efforts to numerous public safety issues and championed legislation to protect Virginia's most vulnerable populations, including our children and the elderly. In December of 2013, Governor Terry McAuliffe nominated Secretary Moran to serve as Virginia's next Secretary of Public Safety and Homeland Security, making him the first individual to serve in this dual role. In this capacity, Secretary Moran works alongside thousands of firefighters, law enforcement officers, and first responders who devote their lives to keeping the Commonwealth safe. It is my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Brian J. Moran, the Secretary of Public Safety and Homeland Security. Thanks, Good afternoon. Melvin, thank you very much for that kind introduction. We're very excited to have you on board as our Director of Fire Programs. 
I know you will continue to fill figuratively the large shoes of Billy Shelton uh, in building relationships with our local law, law enforcement, particularly those fire uh, service programs of the Commonwealth, both career and volunteer. And uh, we look forward to working with you uh, in that capacity and along with your entire staff. Uh, I'm also joined up here by the Deputy Secretary of Public Safety and Homeland Security, probably no stranger to many of you, having he served Fairfax County, uh, then was the, actually the Director of Fire Programs, and then the Fire Chief in the City of Alexandria for six and a half years, where I reside. I always felt comforted that he was in charge, uh, protecting my property and uh, my loved ones. So. Uh, the Deputy Secretary of Public Safety, uh, who's up here on the dais, was um, Adam Teal. So we're uh, really excited to have him on board. Adam is uh, serving us in the, uh, the Governor's Task Force, Rail Security and Safety Task Force, and he's doing a great job. And it just brings to mind, uh, and I want to recognize those efforts by Chief Ferguson and the entire Lynchburg fire department uh, and how they responded so professionally and quickly uh, with great courage to that train derailment recently in the city of Lynchburg and the governor has asked us and charged us with making sure that we uh, are the prepared uh, to respond to such a disaster. So um, special thanks to uh, Lynchburg uh, and Chief Ferguson and how they responded to that emergency and, and Deputy Teal is working on that uh, along with Secretary of Transportation Aubrey Lane. Uh, and Susan, that was uh, great. I love that song. Uh, Commonwealth to put melody to things we love about Virginia, the dogwoods and the cardinals and the bay and the rivers and really appreciate uh, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful song. So thank you for being here and providing us uh, um, that singing voice. Also in the crowd, I want I see from a distance. I uh, is the former Secretary of Public Safety, now member of the Court of Appeals in the Commonwealth of Virginia, Marla Decker. I know she's joined by her uh, husband Chip Decker, and next to her I see is Brian Swan, former Deputy of Public Safety. So appreciate your presence here uh, today. Uh, the um, and before I go on, I, I also want to thank the entire uh, the staff at the Department of Fire Programs, Brooke and Mark and others who have obviously gone to a great uh, deal of work to put this uh, event together and it, it really is a wonderful, meaningful ceremony and we appreciate that hard work and the work of the Memorial Service Committee uh, for all you have done to prepare for this memorial service, so thank you. Uh, on behalf of Governor McAuliffe, it is uh, my honor to be here uh, today with you with so many brave men and women from Virginia's fire and emergency services community. You dedicate your lives every day to the mission of protecting property and saving the lives of others. Virginia's firefighters and emergency medical service personnel are extraordinary individuals who will do whatever necessary to answer the call for help from their fellow citizens. The special public service run toward danger when others run from it. Although these individuals know the risks, they serve without fear doing a job they love. Tragically, every year, fire and rescue departments across the Commonwealth mourn the loss of individuals who have made the ultimate sacrifice serving their local communities. But regardless of the uniform these fallen heroes wore, the loss was shared by every fire and rescue member throughout Virginia and the nation. That spirit of community and mourning is what makes the fire and rescue services special and admirable. That is on display today by the demonstration of various fire apparatus and personnel that are here today, from Roanoke to Virginia Beach to the city of Alexandria and Fairfax County. As we mourn their passing, we also honor their lives and recognize the sacrifice their families have made on our behalf. 
Recognizing this tremendous sacrifice, Governor McAuliffe has designated the week of June 8th as Fire and EMS Memorial Week throughout the Commonwealth. The designation pays special tribute to those firefighters and EMS personnel who died in the line of duty. This year, we honor four brave firefighters who made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Firefighter Joe Perkins of the Danville Fire Department, Master Fighter, Fighter Frederick Broyles of the Newport News Fire Department, Master Technician Claire C. O. Ducker, whether he be Irish or not, spoken by Moran and O'Reilly and a McAuliffe. Thank you. Firefighter Joshua Smith of the Lacrosse Fire Department. And I believe the family of Joe Perkins wanted me to amend and extend the remarks with respect to Mr. Perkins. I believe he was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Is that not correct? Okay. Nothing against the Washington Redskins, of course. But just to clarify, those Steelers fans can be pretty, uh, pretty spirited. These four individuals spent their lifetime protecting the lives and property of their fellow Virginians. Collectively, these four firefighters dedicated over 90 years of distinguished service. They leave behind an incredible void for their family, friends, and colleagues. Their memory will burn forever in the hearts of the people whose lives they saved and those that loved them. We must never forget these fallen heroes, along with the more than 240 brave men and women who came before them, we will never forget. Each, the legacy of these fallen heroes is carried on by you and the more than 75,000 firefighters and 35,000 EMS providers throughout Virginia. We will forever recognize their dedication and bravery. The names of these four heroes being honored today will be forever memorialized on the Virginia Public Safety Memorial along with the names of their fallen brothers and sisters before. On behalf of Governor McAuliffe and 8 million grateful citizens of this Commonwealth, I wish to thank you all for your valor and commitment and offer our solemn gratitude to the families, friends, and departments of those we have lost. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I commend all of you for your unwavering commitment to Virginia's fire services, for the professional and efficient manner in which you operate, and for the outstanding service you provide our citizens and visitors to our wonderful Commonwealth. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Secretary Moran. Carlton Durham of Hampton Fire and Rescue will now recite the poem, Your Father Was a Firefighter. Hey, Mom, he yelled from the attic door. What's these old heavy boots and hard head for? With a lump in her throat and a tear-stained cheek, his mother swallowed and started to speak. Come here, my son, his mother said. There's things to tell when I clear my head. The past races madly through her mind. She searches her heart for the words to find. At last she sighed and rubbed his hair and the words that followed I like to share. Those boots and hat, she said with pride, were worn by a man with grit inside. He wore them to help people in need through fear and danger which never concede. Many a time in the dead of night, he jumped in those boots 
and flashed out of sight. To answer a call, not knowing for sure what danger or heartache he may have to endure. Your father, my son, was not like most dads. It was mainly because of the job he had. His life was devoted to all of mankind. Just why he chose it, it's not clear in my mind. I've often regretted the life that we led when every third night I was alone in our bed. But your mother is proud to say she was part of a man who possessed such a courageous heart. So the memories I've kept and the love I will share are small consolations for the life that he gave. Yet for all his discomfort and all of his pain, the time that he spent here was never in vain. I know full well these words to be true, and not one word did she misconstrue. But from all my mother shared that day is these last few words I like to convey. My mother with tears save a long loving sigh, and I knew what would follow was meant, was not meant to die. With a smile so warm and a voice very weak, she kissed my young brow and started to speak. Your father's days here made others seem brighter, for your father, my son, was a firefighter. Susan Greenbaum will now perform One Moment More. Just one moment more. Please don't. 
This service is in memory of four firefighters who died as a result of protecting the citizens of the Commonwealth, of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Joe Perkins of Danville Fire Department, Frederick Borles of Newport News Fire Department, Claire Ducker Jr. of Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department, and Joshua Smith of La Crosse Volunteer Fire Department. A Virginia state flag will now be presented to their families in recognition of their meritorious service. Each of these flags has been flown above the Virginia state capitol prior to today's service.
We will now have the history and traditional fire service tolling of the bell ceremony as read by Bruce Ponton of the Newport News Fire Department. Assisting the tolling of bell ceremony will be Patrick DeVera of Fairfax County Fire and Rescue Department. Good afternoon. Tolling of the bell, 555. Long before there were telephones and radios across our great nation, fire departments used the telegraph, using special codes to receive the alarm from those once familiar red alarm boxes, which stood on practically every street corner of America. When a firefighter was killed, fell in the line of duty, the fire alarm office would tap out a special signal. This would be tapped out as five measured dashes, then a pause, then five measured dashes, then a pause, then five more measured dashes, similar five, five, five. This came to be called the five, 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 and was broadcast over the telegraph fire alarm circuits to all stations in the vicinity. Heard outside on the streets, with fire department windows open, the resonating echoes were similar to those of fire stations of where all fire alarm gongs sounded the locations of thousands of emergencies throughout the history of our growing country. This was done for the purpose of notification and as a sign of honor and respect to all firefighters who had made the ultimate sacrifice in service. In respect to all firefighters who were given the ultimate sacrifice, we will now have the traditional tolling of the bell ceremony of 555. Five, five. Taps was eloquently played by Joe Bailey, Hampton Fire and Rescue Department. Reverend Teresa K. McRoberts will now give the benediction. As these fallen firefighters and emergency response personnel now reside in a place of light and refreshment where there is no pain, no sorrow, and no suffering, we look to God for our hope and for our posture for the future. May God's spirit sustain us in our grief. May God's creative and redeeming power refresh us in our weariness. 
And may we participate in that same joy and victory that those who have died now share. All of this we pray, knowing that you are the one with the power to rebuild teams, families, and hearts, even in the wake of our loss. And now will you stand for the benediction. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord God is an everlasting God, the creator to the ends of the earth. God does not faint and does not grow weary. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless so that we might mount up with wings like eagles and run and not be weary. Now to this God, the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. And may you bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those to whom love is a stranger may find in you generous friends. Go in peace, knowing that the God who made you goes with you. Amen. Please remain standing for the retiring of the colors.
This concludes the 2014 Virginia Fallen Firefighters Memorial Service. On behalf of Governor Terry McAuliffe, Secretary Brian Moran, Deputy Secretary Adam Teal, the Virginia Fire Services Board, and the Virginia Department of Fire Programs, I thank each of you for attending. Please join us now for a reception sponsored by the Virginia Fire Chiefs Association, Virginia State Firefighters Association, and the Virginia Professional Firefighters Association. Go in peace. Thank you.